let's just cut right to the chase. I'm Canadian, which obviously means that I ride a moose to work, live in an igloo, and I eat a lot of Canadian bacon, or as we call it, bacon. But one of the most important things that everybody knows about Canadians is that we love maple syrup. So when I found out that there was a company called Syrup making photography equipment, I was ecstatic. Now when I found out that it didn't have anything to do with maple syrup, I was a little disappointed, but I'm still really excited to give this sucker a try. As you can probably tell, it's starting to get pretty cold here in Edmonton. So I thought it'd be cool to get outside and do something today. So we're gonna do some time lapses, but we're gonna add the Syrup Genie Mini 2 into the mix so we can actually get some motion in those time lapses. Now a quick primer, this is the Syrup Genie Mini 2 and it is basically like a little turntable. You put your camera on top of it and it will turn it. If you take two of them, I'm gonna have to lose the gloves for this one, and you attach these with this little bracket, one on the side and the other one you attach to the bottom. Now I've got something that almost looks kind of gimbal-like and you can do tilting up and down with this one and panning side to side on this one. So now that I've got it all put together, let's go shoot a time-lapse. Now, for those of you who don't already know, a time lapse is essentially like a video of time being fast forwarded. Typically, it's done by taking a succession of pictures and then playing them back in a sped up fashion or taking a video and just literally fast forwarding it, which I guess makes sense since a video is just a succession of pictures in the first place. Now, there are a couple of reasons why you might want to shoot a time lapse. The first of which is to show the passing of time. One of my favorite uses of time lapses is in the show Breaking Bad. They constantly did really phenomenal time lapses in between scenes to show the passing of time. Not only does it work as a story device, but the other reason you might want to use it, it can be really visually stunning. So if you're ripping through B-roll and it's just supposed to look impressive, a time lapse might fit in perfectly. Okay, so I came out here to the Alberta legislature grounds thinking that I was going to be able to get a lot of people moving around and walking and that kind of stuff, but apparently it's too cold already for people and nobody is outside. So we're gonna have to try something else because one of the most important things about any time lapse is you have to have movement within it. Now, sometimes you can get away with just doing like the clouds moving by or something like that, but the clouds aren't really moving. There's there's really nothing happening here. So maybe we'll try something else. This, we're still location scouting at this point. There's the high level bridge just across the street here. And I think if we set up there, we can get some kind of cool traffic time-lapse thing and get kind of all the cars whooshing by with some blur. Let's try that. I think this is gonna work for us. I hope it's not too loud though. So unfortunately I wasn't rolling at the time, but I'm hanging out on this corner and this bicyclist comes by and hits a patch of ice and slides, slams into my gimbal, knocks my camera over it, almost goes falling down the bridge. One of my uh, ND filters fell down, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to go get that. So there's this corner here. You can see it's kind of icy coming around there and he just slid right into where I had my gimbal set up and knocked my camera right into there. And if you really look down there, there's my filter down there. So I think I have to go over to those big stairs over there and climb down and then I can get back over here so I can go get my filter. Uh, maybe this isn't the best place for me to set up. As far as I can tell, everything is still working. The guy on his bicycle was okay. Uh, I'm gonna have to go figure out how to get this ND filter. You have got to be kidding me. <sighs> here we go. So the filter fell from up there, down to the ground here. So we'll see if it survived. There 
there she is. Looks like it might be okay. Wow. I am thoroughly impressed. Let's just give a quick shout out to Freewell Filters because your filter just survived a drop from up there. Upon further inspection, there are a couple of really nasty cracks in it, but I think it's still usable for the most part, especially at like wide apertures. Should be okay. Nice job, Freewell. Okay, I officially found the spot. We've got the bridge back there, which is kind of a cool backdrop. And then in the water right now, we've got these like big circles of ice floating through that's causing movement. Movement is important for time lapses. So I think this should turn out okay. I really hope so. I just, before I shot this, like my gimbal battery died, my camera battery died mid shot. All I have to say is this video, but I'm still gonna finish it because you just, you gotta finish it. Got it all set up. I've got the control cable plugged in. So the actual unit itself is gonna be what's telling the camera when to take photos. So I think for this shot, because I want to mainly focus on the fact that there is the big bridge in the back, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and focus on that and then get my settings based around that and then we'll choose the motion. Now, in order to get the proper amount of movement, I've kind of decided that I wanna have about a one second exposure and that's going to blur all of these ice flows that are going through the water. So I'm gonna need a filter for the front of this because I can't get it dark enough. So first things first, I pull up the app and I connect to both of the units and it'll show you which one is the pan one and which one is the tilt one. Then if you go to the create content panel, the time-lapse and video function are not available. I'm pretty sure that's if you just have one unit connected and they have some like preset things, but we're gonna go to the keyframe function. And then there are a bunch of automatic ones that are preset for you if you wanna go that way, but we're gonna click new setup. Then by using the joy stick on the screen, I can move the camera. Like a kid in a candy store. So we set our start point and then we set our end point. So now that we've got our start and end point selected, we can choose what kind of video we want at the very bottom there. Right now it's set to video, but I'm gonna change it over to time lapse and hit okay. Now at the top, we've got some new functions. We can choose our record time, our interval time, and our play time. Now you wanna make sure that you keep your interval time longer than your shutter speed. Right now my shutter speed's set to one second. So we're gonna set that to longer than one second in this case. Now one of the cool things is that if you hit this play button on the right hand side, you can actually preview what the move will look like in the end. So. Hopefully we don't get too many runners coming across the bridge and shaking it. I think that looks pretty good. So now we hit the button to reset and then we hit record and it'll start taking photos. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Genie Mini 2, instead of using a gimbal to try and do this, is actually that you can close the app and it will continue shooting. It'll finish what it already started. With a lot of the gimbals, if you close their app, all of a sudden the shooting would just stop which I thought was really annoying. One more little tip, you wanna be in manual focus. First of all, you don't want the camera focus hunting for every single shot. It's gonna be flipping back and forth and your time-lapse is gonna look like a blurry mess. Second of all, when the genie tells the camera to take a shot, it doesn't necessarily give it enough time to catch focus unless your focus is blazing fast. So I've actually tried it once with the autofocus on and it didn't work at all. It wouldn't take any photos because it's like hitting the shutter button, but only long enough just to get focus, but it didn't actually get to take the photo. And now, we wait. This is my least favorite part for sure.
All right, so our time-lapse just finished shooting and I'm really hoping that it turned out okay. It's starting to get a little dark out here, so maybe closer to the end it might be a little bit dark, but I have ways to deal with that that maybe I'll talk about in another video. One of the things that's really hard about time-lapses for me is that you do put in so much time just sitting around waiting for it to finish and sometimes it just doesn't work out the way that you thought it would. So regardless of whether this one turns out or not, I've used the Genie Mini 2 on a couple other ones and I was really happy with the results. Uh, like I said, especially against trying to use something like a gimbal. I've just had bad luck with that in the past and this seems to give me much better results. So hopefully this one looks good. All that's left to do is take it back home into the computer, process the files in Lightroom and then pull it into Premiere where I can stabilize the little shakes and stuff like that. But if you guys wanna see a more in-depth look on how I process photos in a time-lapse, let me know in the comment section below. And on that note, I'm gonna leave you guys with the final time lapse whether it's good or not i'm just gonna play it here so thanks so much for watching if you're interested in the genie mini 2 i will leave a link in the description make sure to leave a comment below and let me know what you thought hit that subscribe button and like button on your way down there and i'll see you next time before how I said that I really didn't like the part where you wait for the time lapse to go. The worst part of any shoot or anything that you do is tear down because all the fun is already done and now you just need to like tear all the gear down and go home. I have to walk up those damn stairs.